Hey folks, I have just knocked on the door of Lord Martin Rees, Astronomer Royale. He's a big, big fish and he has agreed to let me interview him about aliens, AI and Elon Musk. Apparently there's a link. All right. When Lord Martin calculated the threat asteroids posed to humanity, the world's governments took notice and quickly checked that no asteroid bigger than a house was heading for Earth. And it's time for everyone to take notice again because with technology making alien discovery much more likely, Lord Martins had deep insights into the kind of aliens we will find. Hello, sir. Hi, Rory. Hello, good to see you. Good to see you. Nice to meet you. Thank good. you. Thank yes, you right. so much right. for agreeing to see me. Yeah. I really appreciate Very it. Good to see you. Mm. Our galaxy could be teeming with life and we wouldn't know it because up until now, our only way of detecting aliens relies on the aliens firing a really powerful and focused radio signal straight at us. In 1977, a radio telescope in Ohio received a signal that may have been alien in origin. Apart from that, nothing. But this year, we're gonna be able to search for ET on our own some. Because if we push the James Webb telescope to its absolute limit, it'll be able to see Earth-like planets orbiting other stars. If planets have evidence for some sort of biosphere, then uh, there's a reasonable chance we will find that in the next 10 years. That's right, folks. The James Webb telescope might be able to detect life on an extraterrestrial planet. The telescope may tell us where alien life exists, but it won't tell us what that alien life is like. And before we make contact, we'd very much like to know if they're friendly or not. By following the laws of evolution, many scientists think that dominant species on alien planets will be both intelligent and aggressive. We only have to look at ourselves to see how intelligent life might develop into something we wouldn't want to meet. Even though the aliens might not have the same chemistry as us, scientists reason that aliens will still be bound by the laws of natural selection. And on Earth, natural selection has promoted intelligent and aggressive creatures to the top of the evolutionary tree. But Lord Martin sees a flaw in this logic. One thing we know from astronomy is that the sun has got six billion years before it dies, and so the future is potentially even longer than the past. And so uh, it's uh, not appropriate to think of ourselves as being the culmination of evolution, the top of the tree. We may be not even the halfway stage. If humans aren't the culmination of evolution on Earth, then it's wrong to assume that the aliens would be like us. Especially, as Lord Martin suspects, we won't be top of Earth's evolutionary tree for much longer. Could be that we have, um, we are an important transition stage. Now this is where Elon Musk comes in. But before we go there, I think we need to step back and get a proper sense of perspective. Imagine compressing Earth's lifespan into one day, starting at midnight. At 3 a.m., life evolves. Hurrah! At 6 a.m., life crawls out of the oceans. Hurrah! At 10.30, an asteroid wipes out all the dinosaurs. Boo! At 10.41, well before lunchtime, paintings on the walls of caves indicate the first signs of intelligent life. Go humans! 0.3 seconds later, we've created nations, war, computers. We've gone to the moon, destroyed half the Earth's habitats and changed its atmosphere. We've even designed a button which can kill us all. And we might be on the edge of creating something even worse. Mark my words, AI is far more dangerous than nukes. Far. And we're sort of at that stage now. We're just on the cusp. It's an important now. transition stage, yep. The important transition phase is a polite way of saying that after 0.3 seconds, humans are about to get demoted from the top spot. Our replacements could be Top Dog 
for the rest of the afternoon. Maybe they'll last till the sun bloats into a red giant and swallows the Earth at midnight. And if the James Webb Telescope discovers life on an alien planet, then the same thing could have happened there too. If life got started on another planet like the Earth, it's unlikely that its evolution would be synchronised, that we would catch it in this thin sliver of time, a few thousand years at most, when there's a flesh and blood civilization. And to either this behind us, in this case you wouldn't detect anything artificial, or it's ahead. If the aliens are ahead of us, then they're much more likely not to be like us, but like the creatures who replace us. Which is why Lord Martin has been trying to work out what kind of creature is about to rise to the top of Earth's evolutionary tree. And his conclusion is rather surprising, because he doesn't believe our replacement will even be born on Earth. Elon Musk says he wants to die on Mars but not on impact, and uh, <laughs> he's now 51 years old. 40 years from now, what a way to go. Getting to Mars takes months and is far more dangerous than going to the moon. And getting back again is even harder, which is why this is probably a one-way trip. And that's one reason why I think that the human space flights should be left to private funders, because they can launch only the people who are prepared to accept those risks, and they'll be the heroes. But by colonising Mars, Elon Musk could be paving the way for a new species of human to evolve. Um, one possible scenario is this. There will be a few adventurers by the end of the century who are on Mars. It won't be comfortable, it'll be worse than living at the South Pole or on the ocean bed. If they are going to stay there permanently, then they will want to modify their descendants to be better adapted to living in this very hostile climate. And of course, by that time, we'll almost certainly have huge advances in genetics and also um, development in cyborg techniques, you know, where you can link in some, something electronic to, to your brain. FYI, we already know this is possible. Here's a monkey controlling its pong paddle using just its thoughts, courtesy of technology developed by Elon Musk's company, Neuralink. Probably are going to want to regulate those here on Earth, whereas these guys in space, they'd be away from any regulators and they'd have every incentive. And so within a few centuries, that could lead to new species of post-humans. If we can somehow figure out what these post-humans will be like, we'll get a sense of what advanced aliens might be like. And incredibly, we do have a few good leads. Because as the post-humans will connect their brains to computers, it's possible that they will start to think like machines. Of course, we've had machines that can do some things better than uh, our brains. I mean, we've had um, hand calculators for more than 50 years that can do arithmetic better than us. Um, but the big change in AI is that they can learn uh, to do things um, and they seem to have intuitions that uh, are surprising to us indeed that, that this happened in the famous case when the uh, deep mind computer played the game of go against the world champion the game of go is so complicated it would take the deep mind computer billions of years to work out every move which is why when it took on the best humanity had to offer it couldn't rely on number crunching. Instead, it had to teach itself how to think. For a while, the contest looked even, until DeepMind made a seemingly babyish move. <laughs> At that moment, humanity breathed a sigh of relief. It seemed AI would never match the 80 billion neurons that make up our brain. All the experts thought it was a crazy move, but nonetheless, it was a very clever one. Oh. It turns out we were the babies. The move was so brilliant, at first we couldn't comprehend it. So that's an example where machines already seem to have intuitions that uh, are surprising to, to us. 
And if post-humans have AI hardwired into their brains, then we're probably going to struggle to understand them too. And it will very quickly get much worse, because the post-humans can use their newfound brain power to design post-human version 2 to be hundreds of times smarter still. And in a century or so, version 112 will, quite literally, be unimaginably more intelligent than us. There's this word called emergence, isn't there, actually? Mm. Things emerge out of other things and they're more complicated yes, yes, in yes. essence, right? Yeah, yeah. So at the moment, we, one could argue the human brain is the most complicated thing. I've heard mm. yep, people yep. say that. So this would be the next level of emergence. If, well, indeed, yes, I think that's a good way to put it. If Lord Martin is right, then his ideas could change our view on what kind of aliens the James Webb Telescope might be looking at. On some of the planets around older stars, life could have had a head start. And so, if we find something, I think it's going to be far more likely related to something electronic uh, rather than a flesh and blood civilization. And if they're electronic, then of course um, they may not need an atmosphere, um, they may prefer zero G, and they may be near immortal. And for all those reasons, uh, they, they would go to other stars, other solar systems, because uh, if, if you're near immortal, then you're not daunted by a voyage of thousands of years. There are estimated to be more than a thousand Earth-like planets within a thousand light years of Earth. If an advanced alien species evolved on one of these planets, they could potentially be making their way to Earth right now. Their intellect and technology would give them abilities that would seem godlike to us. To prevent the Earth from being taken over, some scientists think we shouldn't advertise our whereabouts. But surely such an advanced species would have known about us long ago. This is related to the so-called Fermi paradox, which is the argument that there's probably no intelligence out there because they would have come to this Earth and eaten us or something like that. If the dominant intelligence is um, something electronic, which is an outcome of uh, design rather than um, Darwinian evolution, then of course Darwinian evolution favours two things. It favours intelligence but also aggression. But this, uh, this kind of uh, evolution, um, it, what you might call secular intelligent design, won't necessarily favour um, aggression. And so if there are um, these brains, mainly electronic, out there, then they may be just sitting there thinking deep thoughts and uh, not <laughs> manifesting themselves. And there's no reason to think they're trying to expand their territory. And so that, that means that uh, even if they're out there, they wouldn't necessarily have come to visit us. They wouldn't have the aggression. They, they wouldn't necessarily, well, because we've no idea really. It's like uh, a dog can't imagine what's going on in our minds and yes. can't understand quantum theory and all, all these things. Um, and so uh, we can't really conceive uh, the future um, if it's moulded by intelligence that's uh, beyond human level. <laughs> it was at that moment that the creature that Lord Martin said couldn't understand us appeared on the scene. This is a great YouTube moment. Yes, yes, okay. Yes, this? yes, this is Goggy and she's ten and a half years old and she, she's very friendly and uh, oh. she's thinking deep thoughts that we can't she's decode. Thinking, no, we can't decode. If the aliens did come and visit us, and if we're lucky, then they might look at us in the same way as we look at Doggy. Basically, we'd be so inferior, I doubt we'd be seen as a threat, and therefore we wouldn't be worth eradicating. Of course, it is possible that advanced aliens visited the Earth in the past, and in fact there are ancient texts which contain stories set in a time period before the Great Flood, roughly 15,000 years ago, which describe near immortals with wisdom far superior to our own descending from the heavens. But unfortunately, there is no proof to back this rather wonderful idea up. What we do know is that thanks to the James Webb Telescope, humanity stands a reasonable chance of detecting life on an alien planet. And if it does, all Earth's eyes and ears will focus on it and try and work out if ET is advanced or not.
Lord Martin's ideas will give us a good clue as to what to look for. What you detect is uh, some burping or malfunctioning machines um, or some entities um, out there um, which are electronic. Or maybe things we just can't understand, we don't know. And if the aliens are advanced, I'm sure Lord Martin's brilliant insights will help inform humanity as to what to do next. Thank yes, you right. so much right. for agreeing to see me. Yeah. I really appreciate Very it. Very good to see you. Thank you, Lord Martin. Really appreciate uh, you giving me your time. Absolutely amazing. If you want to hear more from Lord Martin, then why not purchase his book, The End of Astronauts? Link below. Massive thank you to our patrons. Without your support, these videos would not be possible. Patrons get to see these videos early, get access to hidden channels on the Astro Biscuit Discord server, and they get astrophotography support. And an especially mega big thank you to... Oh, I've forgotten his name. Rick to sign. <laughs> uh, Rick, what's, what's the new album called? It's Volume 2. Astro Biscuit. Astro Biscuit Volume 2. Uh, where can people purchase the second album? Not down there, but on the link below. So if you click just down there, you'll, you'll be listening to some wonderful music. <laughs> uh, yeah, Rick, I actually, I think this, the tunes that you've done, that we've used in this video are supersonically amazing. Thank you so much. Thanks everyone, and see you on the next one. All right, bye. Before I go, a couple of things. I do now have a shop which sells limited edition space prints. The shelves are mostly empty at the moment. We're sold out, but more prints coming soon. Check it out. And if you want to talk more about aliens, then you could try heading to the Astro Biscuit Community Discord server, which is run and protected by these incredible guys. They keep us safe from AI and they wield the ban hammer most wisely. Thanks guys, really appreciate your help. Okay, doodle pip everyone, bye!